Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. We have a pair of aluminum Brembo brake calipers. These fit on a Subaru WRX. I don't know the specifics of what year model car it is. I just know it's a WRX. And these were specific calipers that come on this particular model. So I had somebody reach out to me and ask if uh, this is something that I could uh, possibly help him fix. And what has happened on um, on these and I believe he sourced these uh, used because he's trying to uh, bring the car back to its original state so that he can sell it and he found these original calipers and the problem is is that on one of them this hole here is uh, pretty badly worn out the threads are kind of like stripped and cross threaded so you got bad threads in this one this one the bolt is still broke off inside even though somebody has tried to drill it out and uh, luckily they didn't really get deep into the thread or anything like that, but there's still bolt in there. So we got to get that out of that one there. On this particular caliper, this side has got some uh, loose threads in it. It's messed up. I believe this one is probably the best out of the four, but we're going to go ahead and repair all four of them since we're going to be set up to do that. And what we're going to be doing is uh, using helicoils to repair this. So the bolt size, is 10 millimeter by 1.5. And this is a uh, helical kit that we'll use to uh, fix that. So it's got the drill, it's got the tap, it's got the install tool. Let's see if we can get all this out of here. So it's got the proper size drill, the uh, specific oversized tap for um, tapping it for a helical. And then we have, there's our coil inserts right there. Okay, so this is what I plan on doing to fix that. I think that's gonna be a, a good adequate fix for this and uh, bring it back to life. So the challenge is, is a holding a piece like this. You can see that there's, there's really no machine surfaces on the outside that somebody can attach to or hold on to to be able to hold this thing nice and square. So my plan is, is to use our new Adaptic soft jaws to be able to hold this uh, area right down here and hold it so that we can get in here and do our drilling and tapping. So hopefully the Adaptix is gonna work to our advantage to get these guys fixtured so we can do our machine work. So we'll head over to the uh, Miller machine and go ahead and get started on this. So we're gonna be using our new Adaptix soft jaws for this job here to hold it. This would be our first job using these jaws for and I think it's gonna work really well. Now, if you haven't seen these yet, I've got a video that I've already, already published on the channel uh, unboxing these and getting them set up on the vise here and getting them ready to be used. So there's a lot more detail in that video on just the Adaptic soft jaws. But to quickly go over what how these are used is that you have your moving jaw and your fixed jaw just like normal. Each one of these jaws has all these individual fingers that slide independently, independently of each other. You do have two that are fixed in the center on each one. You can see they all move. So the idea behind these jaws is that you can take work pieces that are not necessarily square and parallel and you know rectangular shapes, something that's got curves and round features in it, like our brake caliper here, and be able to put those work pieces in here and these jaws will kind of conform to the shape of your part. And then you lock them into place and then you can, if you've got multiple work pieces of that same shape, you can go in and out with the, with those parts and the jaws and it's gonna clamp around those uh, pieces the same every time. So in our case, we're just gonna use it to hopefully hold on to this kind of weird shape of a uh, brake caliper. You can see that there's, there's really no areas that are machined to be able to catch. You just have to kind of, you know, be clever about how you're going to fixture and hold these things if you're going to do some machine work. So I think what we're going to do, I was kind of checking out, you know, the height and where this thing is going to sit at in these jaws. So I kind of want to catch this area right in here. Okay, right through here and on this side. So to be able to do that, we're going to use this one, two, three block as like a base for it to set on. That'll kind of set the height right there. And let me see, we'll probably just put them all out like that to begin with. And 
And let's go ahead and open it up a little bit. Set that down in there. Now I'm going to have to do some uh, leveling and some bumping to get to get it trued up. So, you know, you've got a machined area here and over here when it was manufactured. So we're going to use these surfaces to kind of level out on. All right, but let's kind of get started on getting it set up. I'm going to go ahead and run this in a little bit. So what I need to do is put a little bit of tension on the clamps here so that it'll, it'll have a little friction there as we start clamping it up and getting it tight. So I'm just looking down that way. It's looking pretty good where it's at. So we're going to go ahead and uh, screw this in a little bit and see if we can get them to kind of conform. back a little bit. All right, I think I need to put a little bit more pressure on the bolts. Once we get this where we want it, these, these are actually torqued to a 65 foot pound so that they uh, have the right amount of pressure on them. Give a little bit more pressure. I'm watching these guys push back so that they are, they're all kind of touching, I believe. Snug that one a little bit more and then allow these to, uh, tell you what, let's tighten that one up a little bit more. And I want to try to get these to move so that these outer ones can come in and catch more of this caliper here. That one's not doing it, but this one on this other side is. First time using it, so it's gonna take a little practice to kind of get familiar with these, these guys and the best way to use them. Just trying to get that one to come up and touch, which there it is there now. And then that one. All right. I think that's going to work there. Let's go ahead and snug this one up a little bit. Once we get it where we want it, we'll do a final torque on these to uh, keep them from moving. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and what I've got is one of my, this is the four inch stair at uh, precision level. My idea was to kind of already clean these off just kind of hold that down like so. And then we'll uh, use my soft blow, and maybe kind of knock this around a little bit to kind of get it level. Once we get this guy level, should be close enough for drilling and tapping that hole there. All right, we'll start, see if we can get her trued up now. went too far actually let's check it the other way front to back if I'm blocking it I'm sorry I'm just trying to get in here to be able to work on it without blocking you guys Not bad, not bad. Let's see if I can get in here with my left hand to tap this guy. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> okay. It's a sensitive level, so you gotta remember, give it time to kind of settle. Pretty good there. Let's try it this way again. You move it in two axes every time you bump it, honestly. All right, what I wanna do is go ahead and tighten these up some more and see if we can get a little more torque on the uh, holding the, the caliper so it'll stop moving so easily. 
me put a, I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on the vise now too and see if it'll Okay, a little bit more torque there. Depends on how you hold it. All right, well, I'm chasing my tail. That's what I'm doing. I'm chasing my tail. See, we're dealing with paint on there. So every time I clamp it, I get a different reading. I just want to get it close though. I think that is very close there in that direction. Let's try it this way and see what it does. Look at that. I think that's going to be close enough. So let's go ahead and get our torque wrench and we'll get these guys torqued. All right, we're set to 65. Remember, this is only tightening up the soft jaws this way. This isn't putting pressure on the workpiece. Okay, double check that one. Yep, okay. All right, so we got these torqued to 65. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little more pressure on the vise now for our workpiece. And that should be good. That's, that's a, quite a bit of pressure holding that. And I'm looking in here and seeing all of these fingers are touching. So we should have some really good contact holding that, that odd shape. I think we have the brake caliper securely clamped in the adaptics. I put quite a bit of force on there, not over tighten it, but enough that I know that it should not move. It should be nice and tight. We've got pretty good contact across all the fingers front and back. Took a little video there, you should have seen that. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and try to fit the, uh, I'm gonna use this set. This is my Chicago Latrobe metric set of drills. I love, I love this set because it ranges from one millimeter all the way up to 13 millimeter in um, pretty much 10th increments, 10th millimeter increments. So this is the hole that's wore out. I've got the, I believe it's the 8.7 millimeter drill and it fits down in there in a the hole. So we can go to the next one, which should be 8.8 .8 millimeter. And it's a little harder to get down in there, but we might be able to use that one to kind of we want to use this to kind of center the hole, okay? So we'll use that. We'll use a drill to center up on the hole there. This one right here, I did notice that it looks like there was a chip that fell out of that hole right there. It looks like it's got a pulled thread in there. So this one's, I believe this one's compromised anyway. So we're, we're definitely going to do all four of them there. But I was just showing you what we're going to use to kind of help line this up to uh, get centered on the hole there. So I've got the 8.8 .8 drill in there, just making sure, yeah, 8.8. .8. And I just adjusted it in X, Y until we're right in the center of that hole. I can turn it on. You can just barely hear that drill touching the uh, crest of those threads there, but it's not putting out any chips. We should be good and centered on there. So before we actually drill it with our, our drill size for the helicool, what I like to do is put a chamfer tool in there and machine a chamfer that's true with the uh, location of the spindle there so that the drill isn't trying to follow the top of that uh, tapped hole there. Okay, we got our 90 degree countersink tool in there. And let's turn it in the forward direction. Just give it a nice countersink, not too big. But what you want is just enough there that your that your tap drill is going to follow it. 
whenever you go in there with it. So let's see, we can take this out of our way. By the way, we've got a, um, our DRO set to zero in both X and Y. So when we come down, yeah, so now when we come down with our, our tap drill, we're gonna be hitting a nice uh, true chamfer there. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that next now. And we'll go ahead and drill it out. Try not to go down there too fast. Let that drill just follow the hole without walking. There we go. Now we'll set up. We'll probably go ahead and recut that chamfer just a little bit bigger than what it is. You want to you want a chamfer there to help guide that coil down into the hole. That looks pretty good right there. The next uh, step though is the tap though, so that's what I was getting at, have you a good chamfer there for your tap to follow. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm gonna use the spindle to uh, tap this. We'll use a little bit of our anchor lube here on the tap to help lubricate it. A little goes a long way with this stuff, but it's hard to get just a little bit on here. That's about all we need. I thought I'd point this out because I usually get people that ask me about this stuff, especially like on Instagram, is uh, whenever you're power tapping in the spindle like this, is uh, how, does it, how does it follow the hole? Well, that's just it. <clears throat> the spindle is unlocked, it's floating, you can see? So whenever that tap goes into that hole, it pulls itself in there and follows its own thread pitch because the spindle is not locked in any way. So it's floating, it allows it to go down through that hole. All right, here we go. When you're done, when you're through there, just reverse it. The spindle's floating. When it comes out of the hole, it'll just retract. Just like that, easy does it. Should have a good tapped hole there now. So when you install the, the coil, you have the install tool here. On that very first thread, you have a shoulder there. And on the bottom of the coil, you have what's called the tang. It's just bent over, and that allows you to twist and screw this coil into the threaded hole. So you just simply screw the install tool all the way into the coil until it meets up with the tang on the end of the coil there. So that little shoulder and that tang is what drives this as you screw it in there. And you just put you a tap wrench on the end of this thing and just screw it right on down into the hole. Let's go ahead and get our coil in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little touch of this anchor lube there on the uh, coil. That should help lubricate it as it goes in there. We've got our small tap wrench. I usually just try to hold it down, get that first thread started, try to keep it square, straight, equal pressure on the, uh, the tap handle here. Just nice and easy. All right, we're just about in there. So you wanna make sure that very last uh, bit of the coil is at least a quarter to a halfway down in the first thread. So it just, just went under the surface there. So we're gonna go another quarter turn right there. All right, just a touch more, just like that. That looks pretty good. And we'll unscrew it. <clears throat> now you can reach through here with a, uh, I usually just use like a, like a pin punch stick it down in there, and then it just knocks that tang off the bottom side. So I had ordered the uh, 15 mil long coils, which is the same thickness as this ear right here. So it's right at the bottom. 
So we have full, we have full thread engagement all the way through that ear. Go ahead and move the uh, chuck down out of the way. We'll knock that tang off. I got a 5 16 pin punch and I usually line it up. The tang is on this back side there, so I'll stick it all the way to the back and just give it a tap. There it goes. It went off that way. Knock the tang off. So this is one of the brand new bolts that they had bought. This is the factory bolt. It fits in there just like it's supposed to. Here comes the fire brigade. All right, so we've went ahead and moved down to the uh, second hole that we're gonna do, and I've got her lined up. So we moved it at 114 millimeters, and I've just tweaked it in Y a little bit because we're not completely square there. But if I put the drill in there, spin it backwards there, you can't even hear it rubbing the uh, crest of the thread. So that should be uh, good and centered. We're just gonna repeat the process for this just like we did on the first one there. So that first brake caliper is all finished up now. We've got our helicals and both. Everything worked out really good. The Adaptix has uh, done well on holding the caliper just like we need it. So we've got uh, one more here to do. This one's gonna be the little more challenging one here because of the broken bolt. So once we set it up, I'll go ahead and helical this side first since it'll be just like the other two. And then we'll do this one last. I'll have to probably have to find a couple end mills to uh, help get this uh, broken bolt cut out of there, but uh, we'll, get it, we'll get it taken care of. So let's go ahead and jump on this guy next. All right, there we go. Let's grab the other one. Now we're gonna have to repeat the same process of getting it mounted in there. I highly doubt that we're gonna be able to stick this in there and it line up exactly like it did on the first one. I can tell just by sticking it in there. I believe it's, um, it's right and left hand on the, the castings there. So I'm just gonna completely repeat the process of lining up the Adaptix to uh, hold this caliper. Okay, I've got the second caliper set up there level. I use this ear here because this one's nice and flat to uh, get it leveled out there in uh, both axes. So we've got it set up now. And what I was, um, this is the second time now we've set something up and what I think is uh, working pretty good for me 
on the adaptics is when you first start, you know, they got to be loose. But what I've done is I applied enough torque on this side here so that they wouldn't move. But as you, as you tighten up the vise, I left this, this side loose enough so that once it starts pushing back, it'll move all of the fingers so that they'll all shape to the part there. And once they all come up and touch, then I come in here with the wrench and I just tighten it up so I'm not all the way down to 65, but I just tighten it up so that they're squeezed in there and they won't move anymore. And then I come over to this side, loosen this one up a little bit and run this one in, same thing with the spindle, run it in so that they're all touching. And then once they all touch, tighten it, tighten it up, give it just a little bit more squeeze and then come in here with the torque, the torque wrench and tighten them down. And once I get to that point, then I go ahead and I start leveling it out so we can bump it around, get it nice and level, crank down on that a little bit so that it's uh, good and tight. So one of the um, sequences that's working for me on this particular job, it'll probably change from job to job whenever we're using it. But anyway, um, I think that worked out pretty good for setting this up. So we're ready to go now. We'll go ahead and helicoil this side, get this finished up, and then we'll work on our broken bolt side. We got this hole lined up using a 9.8 millimeter drill bit. Right down the center of that without even rubbing the crest of the threads. So I've got a 3 8 end mill set up right here in an end mill holder. We're gonna use that to see if we can't cut that bolt out of there. Since there's a hole all the way down through there anyway, hopefully it'll just kind of stay on the center and cut most of that out. My hopes is that we can go down there through it, through the uh, bolt with an end mill and uh, maybe just be able to kind of uh, pick out what's left of it. I really need a, um, I, I need a 10 millimeter end mill to kind of help line up that hole a little bit better but I haven't filled out a good metric line of uh, end mills here yet. All I've got is just standard int sizes. So we'll go with the uh, three eighths and see if we can get it done with that.
what was left of it right there. Okay, well our second caliper turned out great. I'm glad that we were able to easily remove that broken bolt out of there. That one was a pretty simple one. And all of our vehicles are installed just the way they should. So we're going out of the vise with this guy because this job is done. Okay, well that's gonna wrap up this job. Both of our calipers are now repaired. The helicoils went in there just like they should. So they got good threads on all four of the, the uh, whole locations there and uh, everything worked out really well. I was happy with the way the Adaptic Soft Jaws worked for this job. It really helped be able to take such an odd shaped piece like this that doesn't have any you know, outside machine features to hold on to and be able to grab this thing and hold it so that we could do our work. So uh, real happy how the first job in the Adaptics worked out for me. And any chance I get, I usually try to show in a little bit of uh, detail how things like this work, you know, a helicoil kit, you know, setting it up, centering it, drilling, tapping, installing them. There's a lot of folks that watch these videos every week that are here to learn and try to try to figure this stuff out so they can do it themselves. So. Any chance I get, I try to, uh, you know, get you guys some detailed information so that you can, you know, take that for what it's worth and, and um, you know, apply it to your own work at your own shop there. So I was uh, happy with how everything turned out. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you on the next one.